Hey guys, welcome back to Schizone series. Not quite a lab video today, not quite a, a Schizone episode either. This is a discussion of debugging an assembly, in particular the Schizone flavor of minimal x64 assembly with you know, no linking, no libraries, etc. So you can't use GDB, you can't use whatever debugger your IDE has in store for you. You can't link with C libraries to help you out. So what are you to do? First question is, why can't you use GDB? Isn't that you know an awesome tool? Well, you can't because if you OBJ dump these kind of binaries, um, there's nothing in there to use. There's no debugging symbols of any kind. There is a program header. Our entire program is one chunk of memory loaded into the you know RAM uh, with no symbols, no sections of any kind. So GDB will not work. Uh, why is that? Well, if you recall, our code is just our program starts off with this 120 bytes of just random garbledy gook and yeah nothing in here is debugging information so you can't put breakpoints none of that stuff will work so out of luck and again you can't link with anything because it's so bare bones so what are you to do how are you to find what's wrong with your software when you write it and some cool tricks I want to share and some fun stuff that you might not know about so stay tuned so let's see what to say first. So what I have here actually is I have a sample program with a bunch of bugs in it. So ignore them if you see them, but there's a bunch of bugs in this in this program. Um, what is it doing? This program is trying to take this array, this eight element array, taking each element one at a time, multiplying that by the scalar quantity here, 2.0, and then print it out. So it's a very simple process. Just basically double those numbers and print them out to the screen. So yeah, it should be pretty simple, but I hid some bugs in here and we'll take a look at how to find these bugs as we go through. But just some pseudocode here, what's going on. Program starts, we print, we um, put the file descriptor for the terminal output in RDI. We try to put the number eight in RCX, that's the number of elements in our array. We have uh, R8 point to the array itself. Then we have a loop here. I labeled every single bit of uh, logic here very deliberately just to show you where each thing is. So print float here, prints the float that we just had. So it takes the uh, floating point number out of that array that we are at, multiplies it by that scalar quantity, and then prints out an eight, eight digit number as a floating point. Then it puts a new line to the screen, and then it checks if we're done with the loop yet. So it tries to decrement RCX, and until we're zero, it keeps looping again and again and again. Then it falls out, flushes the print buffer to the screen, and leaves the program. So pretty simple process, but let's see if this works or not. Spoiler alert, it does not. Um, I'm going to run this shell script here that uh, assembles our binary, makes it executable, and then runs it. So let's do that. If I run this, you'll see segfall. So what we, what do we do? What would you do if you happen to see this error come up? Well, you might go through in your code, and you might put out print statements every single line or wherever you thought that it would be important to see, hey, which things come to the screen before the program dies. That's what I would do, and that's what you could do, but there is actually a pretty cool way. So whenever you have a segfall, I didn't know this, by the way. Someone taught me this a couple weeks ago. It actually sends like a signal, and your kernel prints out a diagnostic message in the D messages to report that error. So if you do sudo D message, and I had no idea about this, but this is like new to me. Um, it will print out a bunch of stuff. Sorry, it's kind of laggy. My virtual box sucks. Um, you see here this last message, or the second to last one here, 5562.887 binary. It says segfault at eight IP, and then it gives an IP. What's IP? That's the instruction pointer. Now in C, that won't be useful to you unless you have a debugger to help. But in assembly, that's extremely useful because we know exactly what instruction, or we could figure out, would be at that exact address. So how can we do that? So it says um, address 219E4. So we can go through, a couple things we could do. We can actually go through and we could grab this label, for example. We can say, hey, um, move that value into RSI and then print it out. I can say print out that number. We could do that and that would help you figure, hey, which label is at which address and yeah, that would all work. Um, but there's actually a better way, and it's right here, this very first line, map all mem map. That is some kind of post-processing thing, I have no idea. But basically, this dumps a memory map 
with the file name mem.map to your you know current directory and so if you look we have this mem map and in there you'll see a bunch of stuff you have the source file the output file the first address in the program all this random stuff but you'll also have the address of every single label so now you can see why I was so descriptive with my logic with the labels because hey you can tell where everything is with this memory map so pretty cool so the number was what like 219e4 something not sure exactly something around here was where the error was um, so we can actually do this manually we can go through and say hey where's the seg fault it's at this address this, this IP here's what that corresponds to label wise you could do that but even better you could automate that in a shell strip which is what I did so if you go in you take a look at in the top level of the suppository you have this find seg fault sh in there it's exactly that logic so it runs the message it grabs the IP of the failure it then looks through the mem map tries to find which addresses either correlate with that or bound that error so I'm curious about the code there but if I run that it will report something it will say hey you say fault that address 2194 that comes from the message and it says that's bounded by the start label and the print loop label. So if I go back in the code, we can tell for a fact there's a seg fault somewhere between start and print loop. So one of these three instructions is to blame. So what would what, what have been maybe a complex task to find, hey, which, where is my issue, now becomes very simple, right? Obviously, the second line here is bogus. You can't access address eight. What this is saying is, it basically says, go to address eight in memory and grab the quad word there and put it in RCX. Obviously, you just saw that our program starts at address 20,000 hex, and so eight is way out of our, our range. So that would solve the problem. What's next? If I go and run this again, you'll see that if it stops lagging, for God's sake, come on, dude. It again seg faults. We can find out where that is, either manually or with the shell script. And it says here, in this case, the failure is exactly at the address. Check a loop condition. So we can go into our program again. Check loop condition. This very first instruction after that label is to blame. We're trying to decrement RCX here to check if our loop is done or not. Um, and obviously, this is just the wrong way to do it. What this says is, it says take the byte at address RCX and take one from it. Obviously, RCX is still address, well, it's number eight. In this case, it's the address eight. And so you can't access again that same address. And so seg fault, obviously. You could fix that by saying sub RCX one. That would solve the problem. Now, every iteration of a loop, it will subtract one till it hits zero and then it will fall out. Instead, you could just do decrement RCX. That's the better way to do that. So we can, we can run this. And now there's no more seg fault. But of course, something else is wrong, obviously. This is not the correct multiplication. So we can go and we can figure out why this is. And if you saw the array, you probably could figure out, hey, what's going on here? There's a clear mistake that we made. But um, we can look at some other stuff that I put together that would help us solve this as well. So if you look in uh, Vim, Oh, sorry, not looking at them. If you go to the lib debug debug.asm, I have a bunch of macros in there that are pretty useful. So one of the macros, well, a bunch of macros. So the first one is, well, let me explain how macros work in NASM because you may not know. Basically, you start a macro with this percent macro. This is a multi-line macro, so more than just one line. And you end it with end macro. And in the first line, you have to describe what the name of the macro is and number of parameters. And so in this case, there's one parameter and you can access that string, it's a string basically, uh, with a percent sign. So percent one, percent two, percent three, that would be parameters one, two, and three. And so in this case, if you typed in debug exit eight, so that's the macro name followed by some string, um, that would basically substitute in whatever you have there written in your program, debug exit eight, it's gonna replace that with what's inside this macro tag. So 
it will say, instead of debug exit 8, it will say move DIL 8, call exit. What does that do? This puts the return value, in this case 8, to your terminal out. So I can go into the code and I can show you this. Let's include this um, bit of macros here first. So they're under lib debug debug asm. And we can do at the beginning even right here, we can say uh, debug exit 99. And you can do up to one byte, by the way, for this. So I can close this, I can run. And you'll know this time there's no seg fault. There is no bunch of 2.4s. Instead, nothing happened. Well, actually, it did happen. What happened was we returned that number to the terminal out. You can get that with echo dollar sign question mark, and there's our number. So that's useful with help debugging. It's very useful in the beginning before you have, if you're making this stuff from scratch and you don't have the ability to print stuff yet, you're trying to figure out what's wrong with your print program because you're kind of a loser like me and I was, and I still am. So you can't print out stuff because you're making that program still. How can you debug? Well, you debug with this return value. So yeah, there's that. What's next? We also have, um, let's see, we have this debug registers. So these basically, these next four functions here, these next four macros, basically print out an integer of a register as a binary, octal, decimal, or hexadecimal number. So in this case, debug register underscore B, R8, would print out the constant register B, or sorry, register eight as a binary number. Let's test this out here. Let's do, um, let's do it down here. Let's say debug or register RCX. So now if I run this, you can see before our 2.4 has come to the screen, we have an eight. Why is that? Well, we just printed out RCX basically. So you can do that. And again, if you're curious, you can do something different. How about we say, instead of RCX, let's do R8. What is this gonna print? This, this will print our array address. If I run this, see that massive number 138606? That's the address of our array in memory. You might see it more familiar if you changed it to a debug register H as a hexadecimal quantity. From that, now you have 216, sorry, 21D6E. Does that correlate with our memory map? Let's see, 21D6E right here. Yes, that's our array start. So again, you kind of can debug stuff like that pretty easily. What else do we have in here? We have those four macros. That's cool and all, but what if you want to debug all registers at once without having to type them all out individually? I have that here, debug registers plural. In this case, the parameter is not the register name. It's actually the format for the registers. So you pass in a function pointer to, to our print statement functions. So uh, we can do that. Change this debug registers to, de well, to debug registers and change this input to print int D, for example. And if we run this, now you can see every single register's name and value is there. We have obviously RAX, BX, CX. CX is still eight. Stack pointer is there, R8 is still the value there, RDI is the um, file descriptor for the terminal output, everything else is zero as it usually starts out. So pretty cool stuff. What else can we do? Let's go back and take a look. We have this debug stack. Here we have a two input macro. In this case, you pass in the number of quad words off the stack to print to the screen followed by, again, that format. So if I go back in here, change this to debug stack, and then uh, let's say four quad words of the stack as a decimal number, I can run this. And here you can see I have RSP 0 to 32 um, all there on, on the screen. So you can debug that as well, very useful in some cases. What else do we have? Well, um, this is a good one, debug literal. Let's do that one first. So that's pretty cool. Um, where's the line one though? I have a debug line somewhere. It's also right here, it is debug line. That's cool because it helps you separate what is and what isn't debugging information. So I could, I could say debug line, then debug line here. And then, yeah, I mean, I could just run this and you'll see what's gonna happen. It dumps 
lines to the screen so you can kind of see things more clearly hey what what's what what's going on so again pretty useful thing to have a very short macro to do that right very nice and easy what else do we have we have um, this debug literal in this case you can pass up to an 8 byte quantity to to basically print out to the screen so I'll illustrate that here so let's say um, get rid of all this garbage let's just say debug literal uh, can we do like high and then can we do here like debug literal high again that's too many high to run this you can see here it's like a little print statement the high came out the first time and then high to every iteration of the loop and how does that work it's pretty cool how that works basically it it took that string stored it in a register rsi then put it in a buffer then printed the string from that buffer to the terminal to, to the you know the terminal output and then flush the output so pretty cool how that works but yeah nonetheless a useful thing and then lastly here i have these push and pop all register things this is not useful in the sense that it can show you information but this can help you debug by figuring out hey um are my registers being clobbered or not or i just want to quickly change some stuff here in the code very easily well i can just push and pop everything off the stack really easily to avoid tampering with registers that the rest of my program is using. So with that out of the way, what can we do to solve our, our problem? So again, our problem was that for some reason, we're printing out the same number every single time. So if I close this, I run this, we're not getting what we want to multiply here, we're getting the same number every time. Well, how about we print out the address that we're accessing? So we go back into the code. The address is in R8. So how about we um, debug register R8? We can even do it as a hex number, right? Debug register H R8. If I do this and run, you'll see that the address that we're accessing 216 21D6E is not changing. We're supposed to be iterating through our array but we're not it's the same number every time obviously that's part of the reason why it's not working so let's take a look if we can fix this yeah very easy to do basically our loop doesn't account for the fact that we're moving our pointer basically through the array so just a matter of adding the number eight to r8 so if i run this now you can see we're getting the correct output that we wanted from the beginning we have 2.4, 4.6, 6.8. This is all those elements multiplied by two. So we can go back and we could turn off our debugging statements. We could delete out our include. We can run this little guy and our function now works as we intended. So yeah, with that out of the way, the episode is done. I just wanted to go over this. Again, debugging is not the same as in C or in Boomer assembly, but I think it's not so hard but also also it feels more rewarding when you fix these problems because you had to figure them out in a more you know elegant way i think you can't just step through line by line of the code and let gdp do all the heavy lifting for you you have to think about things yourself and understand how the cpu is handling your registers and whatever else so pretty cool stuff hope you enjoyed i'll see you in the next video